Well, Razorback fans, John Calipari went into a little bit more in depth about his process of becoming the Razorback head coach on the Dan Patrick show. Well, he opened his mouth. He said things. So, you know, we're going to have to talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon starting at 6 on Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Hope everybody had a wonderful week as we are finally to Friday and excited for the weekend as June continues on. We're getting close to the halfway point of the year. Uh, you know, as they get, as you get older, man, the days just, uh, move on by and move very quickly. So either way, I appreciate everybody watching in and listening in. And, you know, this is a pretty fascinating thing. Like again, with, when John Calipari is your head coach, no matter what's going on, no matter what happens, no matter what's discussed, it is going to be of note. It is going to be something worth hearing about and discussing anytime he opens his mouth, anytime he puts out a tweet, that's how it's always going to be. And I thought it was really interesting. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to the entire interview that he did with Dan Patrick, as well as the one he did with Jim Rome, you need to really listen to it as again, it's just really fascinating to hear about his, his uh, approach, his demeanor, his background, all of that stuff. Well, there was a really interesting clip where he kind of went step by step of the process of how he became the Razorbacks head coach, or at least in his mind and in his terms, a little bit more in depth about uh, what was going on there. And it's about a three-minute clip, so it is a little bit lengthy, but it's definitely worth it. And uh, this was John Calipari on the Dan Patrick Show just two days ago. Okay, how does Arkansas know you're available if you're happy at Kentucky? A good friend of mine, John Tyson, he and I have been friends for 20 years. Tyson Chicken. Yeah, 20 years, 25 years maybe. Uh, tried to get me to take the job when I was in Memphis in 2007, maybe. Um, and at that time, Dan, if I left, I left players. Like, they were there. And if my assistant wasn't going to get the job, I wasn't comfortable just leaving. And that was Derek Rose, Antonio Anderson, Chris Douglas Robert, Robert Dozier, Joey Dorsey, I can go on the guys that I would have left. So he calls me on a Thursday night. I'm at the final four. And he said, Cal, it's Johnny. And I said, what's up? And he said, I need you to meet with the AD. And I said, what AD? They said, our AD at Arkansas. And I said, okay, what, what are we meeting about? Well, he wants to talk to you about candidates and the job and what he's trying to do. And why don't you meet with him? I said, okay, but I'm leaving town at one o'clock on Friday. So we got to meet at 11, 1130 and I'll give him an hour. Well, in the conversation, you can imagine if you think this is such a great job, why not you? And he said, Let, give me 15 minutes to talk about you. And then I looked at my watch. And I said, I got to go. I got a guy downstairs who I'm flying with, and I got to get down there. And he said, well, I'm not going to do anything till you tell me no. And then we spent two days, and I'll give you the conversation that changed me. Um, Kelvin Sampson and I have been friends for a long, long time. I called Kelvin to check on Hunter, the AD, who had been at Houston with him. Well, he went crazy. I love him. He's the best. He's this, he's that. Okay, okay. But I'm having a hard time because I'm going to end up leaving players. And Calvin went crazy. What? If you leave, they can leave. They can go where they want. They can go with you. They can go pro. What are you talking about? This isn't 10 years ago. And then he said the one that got me. And if you stay... They can leave. They can go somewhere else. They can go pro. This is different. And you know what? That got me to think in a different way. And within 36 hours, I said, you know what? I want this new challenge. 
I want to help a bunch of families. I want to bring something to that state and that program that explodes this state. And let's go. Let's go do this. So there you have it. John Calipari going into a little bit more in depth of his reasoning of why he chose Arkansas. And he went on to say also uh, that, quote, I wasn't planning on this, but when it came along, I've got to take advantage of this now. Let me look. Then over a two, three day period, Arkansas is in the SEC, too. They've got great facilities. They've got a great fan base, a great building, which houses 20,000 people, a great home court, pretty good support. And lastly, I got to hire my son, like he said. So, you know, that's that's a really interesting insight of just kind of getting an idea of where his mindset has been when dealing with this. It's still a crazy thing. I, I still have to like pinch myself sometimes to remember that, yes, John Calipari is actually the head coach of Arkansas. But so many things dove into that, and I kind of talked about this on my show yesterday. Folks, if you're a Razorback fan, you better your second favorite team better be the Houston Cougars. You better be thanking Kelvin Sampson. Because what it sounds like from that with Cal is, yes, his great, great, great friend, John Tyson, initiated the conversation. Yes, Hunter Juracek rolled it out there and gave him all the reasons to do it. Like, and, and it just really sold the program and sold what they were doing. But from what it sounds like, it was Kelvin Sampson that made the final decision final. I've given it the go-ahead to have him join the Razorbacks and be the next head coach of Arkansas. So that's kind of the first thing. You better thank Kelvin Sampson, and you better be rooting for the Houston Cougars whenever they're not playing Arkansas. At least that's what I'm going to be doing. But just think about how that went. And, and you know, I'm not saying that it's it was something that took so much convincing that he wasn't interested in Arkansas. I'm not going to say that. But it goes to show you how a coach like Cal, who would have been fine where he was at, could have kept doing what he was doing, and he went in and iterated that it had nothing to do with the fans and the people mad at him or anything like that, but for him to approach it and be like, hey, I'm taking this new challenge, and the process is that you just happen to have a best friend that's a major booster that's going to help. You just so happen to have an athletic director that's very, very, very well respected by the coaches that were under him. Sorry, folks, had a little bit of a technical difficulty there, so a little bit of the video had to skip, but that's okay. I was pretty much wrapping up my point anyways. The point is, is that John Calipari's still the dude. He's still the man. He's still the guy that's going to be able to bring Arkansas into, as he put it, a new place that they haven't been in quite some time. And I don't care what anybody says. That's good enough for me. That's nice enough for me, and I can't wait to see the way that it all ends up going down with him as the head coach of the University of Arkansas Razorbacks still. Crazy, crazy, crazy to think about. But what's not crazy is our friends over at Game Time with the Game Time app. We know that there's still a lot of concerts that a lot of you are going to be going to and also some sporting events, you know, things like uh, baseball games or maybe some concerts over at the Amp, you know, whatever it is. Well, you're going to need tickets. Yeah, apparently that's one of the things that they require. Well, if you're going to get tickets, make sure you get them with the Game Time app because they are the best of the best when it comes to buying your tickets where you have, never have to worry about having any overpricing or any sort of scheme or any sort of hidden fees. It's all right there in front of you. They also have last-minute deals where you can save up to 60% off on buying the last minute for any of these shows, any of the events that you end up going to. And you can save even more in exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. So you got to check them out today and download the Game Time app. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets or any tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. It's downloading the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, baseball added another transfer. They keep adding one each and every day, it seems like, as uh, Arkansas was able to get this one out of the Big 12. And his name is Logan Maxwell. He is a transfer from TCU, which I don't know about y'all. 
considering how purple teams have done really well in Baumwalker Stadium the past two postseasons, I am all for bringing in any of those players. Uh, I hope that it doesn't mean that they just have to wear purple jerseys. Maybe it just means that they're on teams that do. So anybody and everybody that can help from those teams, whether it's Kansas State, whether it's TCU, it seems like those are the ones that have to be the bane of the existence for the Razorbacks. But uh, this was a big get, a big get for Arkansas. He had a batting average of 335 during his junior season, three home runs, 25 RBIs, while putting together an on-base percentage of 447. And he's actually originally from Ohio. Uh, he did strike out 23 times through 46 games and drew 30 walks while stealing 10 bases on 12 attempts. Right there, folks. I keep bringing that up every single time that they add a new transfer out of the transfer portal. That is the stat that I am so fascinated by because we know Dave Van Horn is trying to get more athletic, trying to get to more small ball, trying to get people that can be in those positions and steal bases. And so when you have somebody that's 10 of 12, that's a pretty dadgum good percentage. At least last time I checked, I think that's what, 85, 88, almost 90. I don't know. I don't know math. It doesn't matter. It's really good. It's really good. So he's an outfielder, though. He uh, He's going to be probably there at uh, left field because we know that Arkansas pretty much lost all their outfielders, it feels like. And they're continuing to add more, uh, more guys. They, of course, have Aloy's brother, Charles Davilin, Carson Hansen, and Maximus Martin. Like, that's just still a great name, Maximus Martin. But, yeah, they're continuing to try to add add guys into it. And uh, he was actually an honorable mention for all Big 12 this past year. So kudos to them, continuing to add in, and uh, love to see it. Hopefully it continues to grow here on out. Uh, we'll get into the final segment, and there's some basketball news here in just a second. So stay with us here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, we know basketball is continuing on when it comes to adding players and adding, uh, well, at least I think they're going to still add players. They probably need some out of the walk-on position. But still, uh, scheduling has been a big thing and trying to figure out who Arkansas is going to play. They know who they're playing in the SEC they know they're playing in the SEC ACC Challenge. They know that they're going to be going up to Madison Square Garden to play a game. They know they're going to play a game in Dallas. So they keep adding in some mix. Well, the newest one is actually something that was originally coming out from the Illinois side of things. Because according to the athletic director, Josh Whitman, uh, he told John Rothstein of CBS that the Razorbacks and Illini would face off at the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City, Missouri, on Thanksgiving Day this year. It'll be the seventh time that these two teams have faced off against each other, with Illinois holding a convincing 5-1 and one record in the all-time series, which is kind of crazy. I keep forgetting about this, but Arkansas actually met Illinois in the NCAA tournament like two years ago. Did you know the game before they beat Kansas? I don't know why that is. I went to all the NCAA tournament games that Eric Musselman was a part of. I went to every single one of them, and I covered them. I was there in Indianapolis. I was there in Buffalo. I was there in San Francisco. I was there in Des Moines. I was there in Vegas. And I remember so much about each one of those games. But for whatever reason, the Illinois game might be the one that I remember the least amount about. And I don't know why. I remember Arkansas beat them. I remember it It wasn't like a, just a whooping, but it was still pretty convincing. And that was about it. Like there was not really anything that was too memorable about that game. So that's the only time Arkansas has ever beaten Illinois. And all the other five times has been uh, all about the Illini. So, uh, again, I, I love the fact that they continue to add big-time matchups. I think this is going to be big-time one. And it may work out for Razorback fans if you want to do a, a tour day in Missouri, I guess, where uh, on Thanksgiving Day you can go to watch the Razorback basketball team take on Illinois. And then on Friday, Black Friday, you can go and watch Arkansas and Columbia, Missouri, if you want to go over there and uh, torture yourself. You can go and watch that game and then come back on Saturday. So could really work out for you. But still, continuing to add these matchups is great. I love it. Keep them coming. Hopefully it works out. And uh, we'll see how many more games that Arkansas is going to end up adding. But I appreciate everybody listening into the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbors Show for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel next Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you then.